praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is your host, Delta Gregory Newsom, Faith in God and Mac TV. Uh, God bless you on this uh, cold, cold Monday. We bring you greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the head of our life and in honor. Um, Pastor Bishop Dr. Thomas Murchison, Senior, uh, the Pentecostal Church here in Milwaukee, and our first lady, Lady Paulette, to my own lovely wife, Missionary Newsom, and to all of you uh, that have uh, sought out to join us today. And so we want to say uh, praise the Lord and God bless you. Uh, we hope that you have a blessed uh, praise and worship service uh, at your local place of worship. Uh, we thank God for each and every one of you joining us today. And we want to jump right in uh, as we request prayer for all of our leadership, our presider, sister presider, and um, the past tradition, Earth Sunday, we call that, and the Pentecostal College Church uh, here in Milwaukee, as well as the NPPCI organization as a whole. Special prayer for Sister Newsom and uh, uh, Brother Newsom, which is me, uh, continue to pray for us. And the Lord will uh, continue to uh, give us uh, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we may know. How to go in and out from among his people. And uh, we're just uh, asking the saints to continue to pray for us uh, as well as our families. Uh, we hope that uh, each and every one is having a blessed and prosperous of the year. But as we uh, request prayer for the number of those that are in the hospital, uh, we're requesting prayer for all of our elderly, uh, especially those that are. We find the places of their homes, uh, such for our mother, mother and parent, uh, as well as uh, all of our precious mothers and uh, in, uh, our churches. And the Lord is praying for them and God to uh, strengthen them in their bodies as well as uh, on the spiritual level that God will bless them and set them increase in faith uh, into their lives that they'll be able to. Continue to do the necessary things that they need to do as they continue to seek the Lord. Uh, I want to uh, some uh, we had uh, a really busy uh, weekend as it relates to our community, so we want to pray for our community. Uh, our city seems to be inundated with uh, with violence, and I'm pretty sure it's an uptick everywhere because it's getting worse. And we're going to focus on that. We're focused on the gospel of Christ going out to those that desire to um, receive words of life, words of encouragement, and words of empowerment. And as we uh, move before the Lord in prayer, we want to talk about the word empowerment, uh, improve and uh, empower uh, by God. So if we're going to be empowered by God, we should be improved by God. So we're going to talk about some things today as we talk about the word empowerment. And so uh, let us go before the throne as we ask you to pray. Uh, you want to let know, especially those that have special requests on, have private requests that they have submitted. Uh, let us continue to pray for our event greater. And uh, we've all stand with many others that have requested prayer. For their loved ones and their families. Uh, let us continue to do that and let us pray that God will continue uh, to bless them and heal them. All right? So let us go before his promise and uh, call on the name of Jesus. Eternal God, our Savior, in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, we thank you once again, Lord God, for your manifold blessing. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for being so good unto us. We thank you, Lord, for forgiveness of sin. We thank you, God, for Oh God, entrusting us with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh God, for the healing virtue. And as we pray, we petition you, Lord, on the behalf of our people. And oh God, as we stand proxy and receding, we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, you will touch those, oh God, that we reference to that in need of prayer. We ask you to touch in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Send healing, send an anointing, God, that will destroy the human. Lift them up now, God. Lift up the bound down heads. Lord, send strength. Send encouragement, God. Endow them with strength from on high. 
And Lord, help us today, Lord God, if we, oh God, decrease, we ask, oh God, for an increase of your anointing upon our lives, that we may, oh God, declare thy truth, and oh God, declare, oh God, the glorious gospel of Christ. And Father, we thank you, and we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, thank God, amen, amen, praise God. And so we thank God for uh, prayer that's been prayed with the uh, we want to thank God uh, for all of you that have joined us. And so we, uh, we are grateful and thankful uh, to God for all He has done. He's gotten us uh, to this very place that we're in today. And we are on the 19th day of the 12th month of 2022. And we counted a great privilege, honor, and blessing um, to be before you once again. So we're going to dive right in and try to drill down a little bit deeper as we talk about um, uh, empowerment. Uh, we want to uh, look at a few scriptures. And we'll start at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to talk about some spiritual gifts today. Because to be uh, empowered, uh, God did give gifts unto men. And uh, you got people that are not saved and have gifts. And so we're going to talk about this today as we drill down a little bit deeper. And we're going to deal with the theological point. We're going to get into some uh, theological deep points uh, about uh, this uh, being empowered. And improved by God. You got a lot of people uh, don't really understand uh, the uh, operation of the spiritual gifts. And they've been in the church for many, many years um, just because we uh, can uh, give a word uh, or we can prophesy, like using the word prophesy, word prophecy. A lot of times people use the word and say they have a prophetic ministry and they prophesy. And we're going to talk about this and uh, Paul kind of had to educate and teach about the spiritual gifts in chapter 12. So we're going to get into it just a little bit as it relates to the empowerment uh, that comes by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. And uh, we don't want to get mixed up here, but we want to take a look here at Corinthians 12. And he says, now concerning the spiritual gift, brethren, he said, I would not have you ignorant. So Paul makes it plain here that uh, spiritual gifts is given to each person by the Holy Ghost or by the Holy Spirit that God has given uh, these special abilities uh, that individuals are able to minister. All right. So they're able to minister because they've been given these qualities or these abilities to do so uh, by God to operate in the Holy Spirit and to be used. You know, let's let's key in the key words is is to be used for the body of believers. Mm -hmm. This is not for uh, self gratification. You get some glory for you to grandize. And, for you to grandstand and for you to be out front, but this is to edify the body of Christ. All right. Um, also, Romans talks about it. Ephesians talks about it. Chapter four, and then you can also look at First Peter chapter four as it references the different examples about the spiritual gifts. We're not going to go to all those because we would need about uh, a week to teach on these particular uh, aspects of the spiritual gift. We're just going to deal with the one point of empowerment, okay? We know uh, there's different gifts. We're going to talk about the different gifts. Some people have more than one gift, all right? We want to make sure we make that clear. Some people have more than one gift. The Bible says, God, you know, uh, give every man according to a measure of faith and according to his several abilities, okay? And so God... Uh, is the one that sets the limit. We don't set the limit, okay? God sets the limit based on ability and diversity. Uh, the person, you know, desire uh, 
uh, to operate in these spiritual gifts. So, as we talk about these spiritual gifts, we want to talk about all the spiritual gifts comes from the Holy Spirit. You'll see in uh, Galatians uh, 5 and 22, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, meekness, uh, faith, and temperance. And, you know, and it says, against such there is no law. So we got to understand that these spiritual gifts are derived from the Holy Spirit, which we already have said before, right? So the purpose for these spiritual gifts is to build up the body of Christ. These spiritual gifts is not given to tear down, but they're given to build up the body of Christ. And sometimes people misunderstand these gifts because they feel like they're being torn down, but technically they build up the body of Christ, the church, builds up the church. Uh, and sometimes instead of building up the church or unifying the body of believers, uh, they ran into a problem in the Corinthian church. Uh, and the issue was uh, the spiritual gifts, uh, I guess they were uh, divided. And so uh, let's go a little bit farther. He says here, ye know the Gentiles were carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Hmm? He says, where or I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called it Jesus the curse. All right, let's take a look. We got to understand what spirit is operating. Praise God. And if we don't have enough discernment or enough, uh, I don't know, enough depths in God's Word and enough experience in the Holy Ghost to recognize uh, there are different spirits operating. We got to know that no spirit of God called Jesus the curse. All right. And that no man can say that Jesus is Lord. This is where I led to last week. As I was talking about last week, no one can say, no individual, no spiritual person can say that Jesus is Lord. But by the Holy Ghost. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost. You sure enough can't testify to. Praise God. Hmm? And you got some professing, but they're not possessing the true essence and the power of the Holy Ghost. Why? It's because sometimes people will, will deny truth and they will reject truth. When people deny and reject truth. Uh, there goes their empowerment. But God wants us to have this power. And he said that it is a promise. So we can receive it because it's a gift to us uh, from God. All right. And this is why everyone that says Jesus is Lord, uh, they testify that Jesus died and rose on the third day. Mm -hmm. So we must testify to the truth. All right. So if we go a little bit farther, uh, it was splitting up the church at that time because some people uh, thought uh, in their gift, I'm going to say that some people thought in their gift, uh, it didn't uh, line up with the word of God. And so when your gift or you know, uh, the prophetic word you give don't line up with the word of God, then you have to examine uh, the gift that's operating. You have to examine whether it be of God. All right? The scripture did say, try the spirit, whether they be of God. All right? Try the spirit by the spirit, whether they be of God. And so we can try the spirit uh, by God's word and examine whether they be of God. Because God's word, words, they are spirit and they are life. All right? You don't want nobody to misunderstand that scripture. Try the Spirit, by the Spirit, see whether they be of God. So if you look at the Word, the Word is Spirit and it is life. Jesus said, The words that I speak unto you, they are Spirit and they are life. So we can look at the Word of God and see 
if they line up with the holy writ or with the holy uh, word of God, all right, which is God's uh, Holy Spirit. Now, we can see here in First uh, Corinthians chapter 12, there was a little conflict and there were some issues going on. And instead of building up and unifying the church, they had an issue uh, of spiritual gifts that were splitting up the church. And why you say that, I mean, some uh, had become a uh, symbol of spiritual power causing rivalry. You know, and let me give you an example. Uh, some people thought they were more spiritual than others because of their gift. Hmm? This is why we have to look at as it relates to prophesying. You know, uh, Paul kind of lays some things out. We're going to keep reading so we can get to just that. But uh, preaching uh, is also a direct uh, word of prophecy. A lot of people don't look at preaching as prophecy. Now, I just got to break it down. The empowerment comes through the Holy Spirit. And this is why Paul and Peter and Barnabas different ones uh, that carried the gospel, even Stephen, and different ones that ministered in the book of Acts, they actually were going forth in their gift, and sometimes people didn't understand that it was a prophetic word that was being given. Mm -hmm. Because they, they, they were so, uh, sometimes we can be so set on a particular order, praise God. But we have to remember that God can move at any time and any way he pleases, praise God. And so it's the will to do of his good pleasure. And so we need to understand the word as it relates to prophecy and how God operates. And sometimes we don't receive the preacher that the words God put in his mouth to give us as prophecy always, praise God. And the word can be prophetic that comes from the man or woman of God. So we need to be careful. We're just waiting for somebody to stand up before us and give us a word of prophecy because God can give a word of prophecy at any time. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And we have to be spiritual enough to be able to uh, perceive it and discern. Now let's take a look here. We're gonna go a little bit deeper here. We're drilling down. Now this is uh, just going a little bit deeper as we talk about empowered to be improved. And these Gifts were given to the church to empower the believers, to build up the believers. Hmm? And some of them began to divide. And one thought one was more spiritual than the other because their gift was different. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? And this was a terrible misuse of spiritual gifts because their purpose was to help the church function. And anytime what we possess or what we think we possess stops the church from moving forward but what we think we have is better than somebody else that stopped the church from progressing more effectively then we can cause divide hmm? but we should always be looking for uh, a way that uh, all these gifts can work together more perfectly hmm? And uniformly so that uh, the functions uh, that the church can function more effectively and be a witness to the world and to those that need salvation we can be divisive if we're not careful we can be divisive uh, in the way we understand the operations of the gifts we can be divisive let's take a look now he says here, no man that have spirit of God call it Jesus accursed, and no man can say to Jesus Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gift on those two. And he says, but it's the same spirit. Oh, glory be to God. And he says, and there are differences of administration, but the same Lord, the same God, even though there's a different administration. And this is where People take issue at in the church. They do it like this over here. They do it like that over there. But Jesus had saw the confusion that was getting ready to start back in the gospel. Before, before the book of Acts, they, uh, his disciples had saw some other disciples. Oh, glory be to God. 
And we want to talk about empowered to be improved. And Jesus said, if they not against us, they must be for us. All oh, glory be to God. So what Jesus was saying, leave them alone. All oh, glory be to God. Because I got other sheep that's not of this fold. All oh, glory be to God. I want to let you know God was going to give them the same power that he was going to give them. All oh, glory be to God. Huh? And sometimes we can't see the same God blessing others just like he blessed us. All oh, glory be to God. And so we got to be careful. And we got to be uh, very, very uh, uh, sensitive and full of discernment to know that there's diversities, different administrations, but the same God that working in all. Mm -hmm. Now, if they, if they call him uh, Jesus the curse, we know that that's not, oh, that's not the operation of the Holy Spirit. So don't misunderstand me. Mm -hmm. If they're doing something crazy that this uh, uh, disavows the word of God, that disavows the Holy Writ, that disavows truth, then we know it's not the Holy Spirit. All right? So we got to make sure. This is why I uh, kind of refer to, uh, you know, uh, some other leaders that talk about these false prophets, you know, because there's false prophets out there that will uh, cause problems. And we got to be careful. We can't just get caught because somebody can preach good or they can teach good. We got to make sure that their lives bear witness to Christ. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Their very lives are up to par. All right. It's more than just teaching and preaching because you got people they can go to school and you got people they're born with these gifts. And scripture tells us plainly for the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. So you don't have to uh you don't have to be saved to know how to preach good. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be saved to know how to oh glory be to God teach good. But you gotta have the Holy Spirit to live right. Praise God. Mm -hmm. If you ain't living right then it ain't the Holy Spirit in you. Praise God. This is how we know. Now, look, let's take a look here. He says, now, there are diversity gifts, uh, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man profit with all the Holy Spirit is given or is manifested is manifested of the Holy Spirit that all men for the common good what do you mean if it's not for the common good then we have to examine and call it into question hmm? if that prophecy or that gift that's operating, if it's not for the common good, then it's causing problems, it's causing division, it's causing somebody to be stunted, it's causing somebody to be hurt, it's causing somebody to leave the church, then we got the exact. Praise the Lord. I hope I made that plan. So to be empowered is to be improving the body of Christ as we grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so I hope I'm not... Uh, 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 going to a point where I'm uh, not making this clear. All right, so let's take a look here. And we're going to get into this empowered and improved. We're going to Hebrews chapter 10. After this, we're going to Hebrews chapter 10 to see how the old administration worked and how God brought in the new administration and how it worked. Okay, so let's take a look here. He says here, for to one is given the spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge, but the same spirit. Hmm? If we're not careful, we cannot be hating on somebody. Oh, I know I'm messing up. We got to be careful that we're not hating on somebody because God gave them the spirit of knowledge. Hmm? And another, the word of wisdom. Hmm? It's the same Holy Ghost. Oh, glory be to God. And if you have it, we ought to appreciate it being in the church. Praise God. Because guess what? The church cannot uh, perfect us if these gifts are not operating 
like they should. And this is what Paul was just addressing, that if they're causing problems and causing conflict, then it's going to hamper the work of the Holy Spirit that comes to bring everybody into unity of the Spirit. All right? So we got to make sure until we call, until we all come into the unity of the faith, of the perfect stature of the measure of Christ, oh, glory be to God, we got to make sure that we're all in alignment with the Holy Ghost. Hmm? Because one is given a word of wisdom, another one is given the word of knowledge, and it's the same Holy Ghost. Another uh, faith by the same Spirit, and another other gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Another the working of miracles, another prophecy, another discerning spirits, uh, another divers of tongues. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? I know. I know some people want to fly off at the tongue like somebody else in gifts of tongue. But if God didn't give it to you, you ought to just thank God for the gift he gave you. Now, I'm thanking God and magnifying God in the thing that he has given un unto us to, to magnify uh, the offer that he called us to be in. Praise God. And we're not hating on nobody. Praise God. We ought to be embracing uh, one another anointing because it's all needed to perpetuate the gospel of Jesus Christ and that the body of Christ will be effective. Now, let's take a look. It says here, to another working of miracle prophecy, discern of spirits, another divers of tongues, and another interpretation of tongues. Look at this. And another, he says, uh, he says, interpretations of tongues. But all these work at that one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. And so God is doing the work through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And we are all are called into this one spirit into this one hope of the calling where we are called, right? And so God has made us all to drink of that one spirit, all right? And so we need to uh, understand that it's God that's doing the work, all right? And I know we do, but he says here, uh, the self-same spirit dividing to every man as we and so uh, divers mean different hmm? and severally mean individually hmm? and self same means the same and so there is some point in this as God improves us it's the same through the Holy Ghost hmm there are some areas it's individually as he will hmm? and some places it's diverse which means different according to the power that working in us hmm? and this is why we have to understand god will do exceedingly and abundantly hmm? above all we can ask or think he says, according to, it depends on, uh, according to the power that's working in. We can see Apostle Paul operating uh, in full surrender mode as being the prison of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was in full surrender mode, a, a full sur surrender mode. And this is not to discredit Peter, or Barnabas, or none of the others. Praise God, because they all were working under the self-same spirit for his life. And we can see Stephen and we can see different other ones engaging in the book of Acts and we can see them doing the work of God that was placed in their lives through the Holy Spirit. And they were led uh, of the Holy Ghost as God directed them. Praise God. And so should we as believers. And so this is why it's very important that each part has a specific function. As we get into the theological point, each part, as we do in our natural bodies, each part has a physical function uh, to carry out. Mm -hmm. 
to help the body as a whole. Praise God. All oh, glory be to God. Huh? And so there are parts that are different for a purpose. Oh, I'm different than you for a purpose. That God is, oh, glory be to God. I'm in here now. Move over and let me have some collard greens. I'm in here now. <laughs> I got to go. Oh, hallelujah. I know. I be messing with people when I say this because people do not understand God's purpose and his divine will. Oh, let me get out of here. I got to go. Hallelujah. I got to go now. But there is a different part for different purposes. All right? And Christians should avoid two major errors. That will stop us from being empowered and being improved. Here's the two errors that we make. Being too proud hmm, of the gift that God has put in you. And thinking that nobody else have anything to give to the body of Christ. Those are the biggest, all oh, glory be to God. Those are the biggest, hugest, largest stumbling blocks that a Christian or a believer can make is that I'm the only one. Oh, glory. I'm not the only one saved. Let me get out of here. I got to go. I am not the only one saved. And I am not the only one that can read the scriptures. Praise God. Hmm? I'm not the only one can interpret the scriptures. Praise God. But God has called us all to all oh, grab hope to this gospel plow and understand it and work all oh, glory be to god and we got to make sure that we're working for the common good and we're not working the works of satan jesus said i must work the work of him that has sent me and i must do it while it's called today all oh, glory be to god because when night coming no man gonna be able to work ain't no sense you waiting till you get 65 before you start Going out here telling somebody that Jesus saved, you need to do it now. Hmm? You know, since you wait until you uh 55 before you go out and tell somebody that Jesus saved, you need to do it now. I know, I know I'm, I'm coming against a lot of this craziness because we need to understand that we're running out of time. Oh, glory be to God. And you have been called, you have been empowered, and God want to improve what he is in power. Oh, glory be to God. And you cannot improve your body if there is no exercise. Oh, glory be to God. Huh? And so we must exercise our faith. What are you saying, all of you? Hmm? The Bible says, uh, you know, uh, bodily exercise, proper little. But I encourage you to get the little because if you don't get the little, you will have atrophy in your body. Praise God. And so. I want to say, the exercise ain't going to get you into heaven, but I tell you what, it does help, you know, uh, it does help uh, soothe some of this body pain and help keep these muscles loose and kind of ward off arthritis a few more extra years. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't permanently ward off anything, but it does help. And so anytime we can look at these spiritual gifts and they are there to help, who are we to stop those gifts from operating? Hmm? God placed them in the body of Christ. Who are we to stop the gifts from working? Hmm? And so we have to be careful as believers and discern when the Holy Spirit begins to work. Oh, glory be to God. I know, I know I'm messing up big time, but I want to share with you. It's very important that we are going to be empowered. We are to be improved. And I, we talked about last week. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 10. And then we're going to talk about the biggest mistakes uh, that uh, uh, leaders have made concerning this empowerment. All right. So let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to do some reading here. And uh, we, we like to get back into Corinthians 12 and spend some more time. But we need to uh, drill down into those other uh, scriptures, uh, you know, uh, that we have, which is in Peter and also in Ephesians and some of the other uh, books that we called out earlier. So we're going to go back to those probably at another point. But we need to finish this subject as it relates to uh, empowered and improved. So the only way we can know how we've been empowered and improved, we got to look at the old, 
we got to look at the whole system. This is why I'm going to Hebrews chapter 10 to break it down for you. We got to look at the old system that we may appreciate the new order, that uh, the new testament that God has uh, purchased with his own blood. So we got to take a look at it. We got to look at the old system and then look at the new and uh, living way. So we got to take a look. Look look at the old system. It was a sacrificial system. Let's take a look here. So God empowered uh, them through his word. He empowered them. He sent his word and it did heal. So he empowered them and he took away the, the, the first that he might establish the second. So let's take a look here. He says here, for the law having uh, for, for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very uh, image of the thing uh, can never uh, with those sacrifices which they offer year by year they offer sacrifice year by year I want you to look at this empowered and improved aren't you glad God died on the cross and gave his life for a ransom and for atonement for us for the remission of our sins so we don't have to do all this ceremonial work all this physical labor praise god hmm? you cannot tell me we don't appreciate improvement some people want to go back to the carts and the buggy but i'm glad we have a car <laughs> let me go let me get out of here i got to go somebody empowered the car instead of getting the horses and, and having a wagon or a buggy but somebody improved the method of transportation and i'm glad about it. look at the church year by year sacrifice had to be offered hmm? continue hmm? it says uh, it says and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices the sacrifice never could do what Jesus did. All oh, glory to God. Aren't you glad he empowered the church? He said, all oh, glory be to God. Hmm? He said, lo, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, O oh God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, he said, but a body thou hast prepared. Aren't you glad? Oh, glory be to God. The Bible said, cursed be the man that hangs on the tree. Hmm? Cursed be man on the tree. Jesus was cursed, so we wouldn't be cursed. All oh, glory be to God. I'm glad God reversed the curse. I don't know about you, but we all were sentenced to death. Oh, and he, he empowered and improved us on that rugged cross. People want to know what Christmas is all about. Oh, it ain't about buying no gifts. Oh, glory be to God, because the gift was given. Oh, but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Isn't that, oh, isn't that enough? Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, I can look at the cross instead of the tree. Oh, I know people got their Christmas trees going and got their lights going. But I want to let you know I can look at the rugged cross. Oh, and I ain't got to look at no green tree. Oh, glory be to God. And know that my sins have been washed away. Oh, glory be to God. I feel like going on today. Let me get out of here. Let's go. Look at this. He says here, year by year, continue. Make the commerce there into purpose. It never could do the job. Hmm? He says, but then would they have ceased to be offered? They would not have ceased to be offered. Don't you know that there is no more bulls and goats and lambs being slain for your sins? Oh, glory be to God. Because that the worship once purged should have no more conscience of sin. Oh, glory be to God. I sure thank God he washed my sins away. And oh, I ain't got to have no conscience hmm, of what I had did a year ago. Hmm? Oh, glory be to God. I ain't got to worry about what I did 10 years ago, what I did 20 years ago. What I did 30 years ago, I don't have to worry about it. I don't even have to worry about what I did yesterday. Oh, glory be to God. If I keep a heart of repentance toward God, toward my brother and sister, I don't have to have no condemned conscience. Look at this. He says, but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again 
made of sin every year. Every year they were reminded of this. Oh, glory be to God. Don't you know the, the oh, glory be to God. The first system, it plagued them with remembrance of what they had done. Hmm? Really? For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body, all oh, glory be to God. He said, But a body thou hast prepared. Oh, hallelujah. He, thou hast prepared me, and in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written, Do thy will, O God. Above when he said sacrifice and offering and offer for sin. He says here, Thou wouldest not neither have pleasure therein. Where are offered by the law. Look at this now. Look at look at this empowered and improved. Hmm? It was offered by the law. Huh? And he said, then he said. Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He take it away the first. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? He take it away the first that he may establish the second. Oh, glory be to God. You talking about improvement. Oh, oh glory be to God. You talking about it. You talking about it, an improvement. Oh, glory be to God. By which will. We are sanctified. Oh, glory be. We ain't just now got our sins covered, but now we are sanctified. And do we really know what the word sanctified means? We have been cleansed. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. We have been cleansed. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we ought to be giving God praise today. We have been cleansed. Oh, by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Look at this. We have been cleansed because we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus once for all. Now, I want y'all to see that. I want y'all to read this last verse here. Uh, Hebrews 10 and 10. He says, by which will we are sanctified. It is God's will that you be sanctified. Stop letting people tell you, oh, oh, glory to God. Stop letting people tell you not to be empowered and not to be sanctified. But by which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. We've been sanctified once and for all. Hmm? God canceled the first system. Huh? And gave us a far better one. Hmm? Doing away with the old system which contains sacrifices. Oh, glory be to God. You talking about empowered and improved. I told you I was going to get to it this week. Hmm? And look, this ceremonial law, it didn't mean God was, a, it, it didn't mean God eliminated the moral law. Now, I'm getting into something. I got to go though. I got to go, really. So we, we like to break it down too. God did not get rid of the moral law because you can look at Romans 8 and 1 and see. He says here in Romans 8 and 1, he says, therefore now there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. God did not get rid of the moral law because he said, now who we yield our members to, that's who we become servants of. So the moral law, oh, God still had that in place so we can know when we sin, when we mess up with God. Oh, I got to go. When we transgress against God's law, he still got it in place so we don't be walking around sinning and don't have a conscience. I got to go. Let me get out of here. Oh, glory be to God. Mm, I know I need to drill down a little bit deep. But look at this. He got rid of uh, this sacrifices contained in the ceremonial law, but didn't mean that he got rid of his, oh, glory be to God. The moral law. He did not get rid of it. The Ten Commandments still is in play. And I won't let you know you cannot steal and you can't kill. 
Mm? Well, you might steal, you might kill, but it's against God's law. Praise God. And that's what transgression means. It means against God's law, my friend. And so God took these ceremonial laws and prepared the people for the coming of Christ. Hmm? Look at this. Because the law had a shadow of good things to come. But it never could make the comments there too perfect. Look at this stuff. But when Christ, with his death and resurrection, the system was no longer needed. The old system was no longer needed. Hmm? You're talking about a total overhaul. Hmm? Christ had power to improve the old system and revamp it and give us a new system, a new and living way. Oh, I got to get out of here. I got to go. Oh, glory to God. I'm excited today about this. Look at this. Through Christ, we can fulfill the moral law. It says here in Matthew 5 and 17, think not I come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. And in Romans, if you look at Romans 10, oh, glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. I got, I got to get out of here. You look at Romans uh, 13. You look at Romans 13. Christ is the end of the law. Christ is the fulfillment of the law. All right? Hmm? So when we love our neighbor, we fulfill the law of Christ. Look at it now. Hmm? And so the moral law allows us through Christ to fulfill his moral law as we live uh, or as the Holy Spirit lives in us. I'll put it that way. As the Holy Spirit lives in us, it allows us to obey the moral law, hmm? to fulfill the moral law. But look at it. Christ's work was finished. Hmm? The priest's work was never finished. And this is why the Bible said, for we have not a priest. I got to go now. Which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. But at all points tempted like as we are yet yeah, without sin. You can make it. Don't let nobody tell you the devil made you do it. And I can't stop sinning. And I just got to sin. And I can't stay out of that woman's bed. I can't stay out of that man's bed. That ain't my husband. Oh, I got to get out of here. I can't stay out of that woman's bed that ain't my wife. The devil is alive. Hmm? Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Who's giving the strength? We got to discern who's doing the strengthening. And the Bible said we should, as believers, we should not strengthen the hand of the weak. I got to get out of here. I got to go. Hmm? I'm not going to bless you in your mess. Oh, glory be to God. I'm not going to tell you going to heaven and I know you headed to hell. Oh, glory be to God. I'm going to tell you to turn around. Because hmm? the train ain't backing up. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? If you don't understand what turn around means, it means to repent. Hmm? That's what I'm going to tell you to do. Because we're running out of time, my friend. And I won't let you know we love you with the love of the Lord. And we want you to have all that Christ offered huh? to the body of Christ. Hmm? Anything less than holiness is a mess. Oh, I got to get out of here. I got to go. Oh, uh, remember the good faithful words of Ellen Newson. Anything less than holiness is a mess. All right, I got to get out of here. But I just want to let you know anything less than holiness is a mess. And look at this. As I go, I want to leave this with you. Uh the old sacrifices never could completely remove sin. I want to let you know this. Christ, which was the one, the anointed, which was empowered by God to improve hmm? the new and living way. Hmm? Christ effectively cleansed us. What do you mean, Elvin? There's no stain there. Hmm? The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. All glory be to God. Hmm? That is improvement. If you don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sin, 
we here to suggest you to be empowered by God. We want to pray for you. We're going to go before the Lord's prayer now. But we didn't get to the biggest uh, mistake that leaders make. And I would, would like to have dialogue on this, but uh, we, we'll, we'll pick it up at another time. We're going to have to pick it up. You know, this is part four, but we'll pick up part five uh, into the new year that the Lord's will we probably uh, will uh, uh, get more resources on this. We need to research and uh, study the word more so we can get some more resources on these biggest mistakes that's being made. And we need to recognize them as being mistakes. Mm -hmm. And we need to embrace the word empowerment and stop hating on the word empowerment because it really includes the entire operation, the entire body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And if you working on a job and you don't want to empower nobody else to work on the job, you're going to be doing everything by yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this before I go. You're going to be doing everything by yourself. And sooner or later, you're going to burn out. Hmm? And why are these leaders having church burnout? Why are they having ministry burnout? Hmm? When God has sent you help and there's help there for you. I think it's time for you to utilize your help. Praise God. And if they, if they don't uh, know what to do, train them. All oh, glory be to God. Tell them what to do. I got to get out of here. I got to go. Huh? I tell you what, I'm going to tell somebody to do something. I'm not going to sit there and kill myself. Praise God. Hmm? But I'm going to do just like the Lord did Moses and sent his father-in-law to him, Jethro, and told him what he needed to do. Praise God. Hmm? Jethro advised Moses. And I think Moses, after he got tired enough, he began to listen. Praise God. So if I were you, I would not make the leadership mistake of not empowering others. Praise God. And I know I'm not insinuating anyone has and is, but I'm saying if we have made that mistake, we can always make a correction. Praise God. Hmm? It's never too late to make a correction until you're in the grave. Hmm? Because how a tree falls, that is how it's going to lay. So these are the faithful words of Elder Newsom uh, with the faith in God and that TV. Uh, we love you with the love of the Lord. Empowerment needs to transfer power to someone else. Have you transferred power to someone else? Hmm? I know Paul told Timothy. <laughs> he said, I charge you before God. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, glory be to God. I got to get into here. <laughs> And that is appearing who will judge the quick and the dead. He said, preach the word and be instant in season. And how to see them. Prove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Hmm? Because the time is here now. Well, men will not endure sound doctrine. So empower others. You know, uh, grab others, help others, show others uh, how operate in the gift that God has placed in them. And we have to remember as we empower others, they may not have the gift that we have. But since God has entrusted this gospel uh, to us, we are to identify whatever gift is working there and work with them so they can grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. These are the faithful words of our Jesus. Uh, with no further ado, we're going to say God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to let you go. And we just want to say uh, thank you for joining uh, the Faith in God and that team broadcast. Uh, I believe uh, this week they are having Bible class. I believe that, uh, I believe it's prayer at 6 on um, Tuesday. Bible class for uh, prayer service thereafter. So uh, please uh, take heed to those announcements. Hopefully we'll be back Wednesday if the Lord will. If not, we hope that you have um, a Merry Christmas. So, some people don't even want to say Christmas. They say Happy Holiday. But we know Jesus is the reason for the season. So we hope that you have a Merry Christmas. 
think that God will eventually bless and prosper you and your family. All right? To all of you with the love that is in Christ, we love you with the love of the Lord. And with those gentlemen, Greg Newsom, uh, with the faith in God, gentlemen, and TV. Until next time, may God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise God.